Um, here are the solutions for the mock exam problems. Uh, first of all, we have these two functions, and uh, it asks us to find the inverse function of um, f. And uh, the way you're going to do that is you're going to use a process called variable interchange. Remember that um, inverse functions basically have their x's and y's switched. So that's how you find uh, the inverse functions algebraically. So if I start out with a function, which is y equals 2x plus 2x minus 1, which is the um, function f, the way I am going to find uh, the inverse function, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the y with x, and I'm going to replace the x with y. Okay, and that, that basically is the inverse function, but I'd like to solve for y. I'd like to put y by itself on the left. So I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra to do that. x plus 1 equals 2y. Last thing I need to do is divide both sides by 2. And that finally gives me the inverse function. It's y equals x plus 1 divided by 2. And I could write it as f inverse um, x equals x plus 1 over 2. Okay? Um, then it says to find uh, f follows g and to simplify. Okay, so in this case, it's f follows g and the input is x. So we cannot put in a number and uh, just do arithmetic like uh, we've done in the past. For this one, we do need to take the whole g of x function and just put it inside the f function. Because remember, f follows g is the same thing as, hey, g is inside f. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite my f function with uh, parentheses like that. And then I'm going to write my g function also with parentheses, like that, okay? And then which one am I going to put into which? Well, I'm supposed to put the g function inside the f function, so I'm going to take the g function and I'm going to put it inside the f function, and then I'll have this. 2, 3, plus 1, minus 1. And uh, what do I put inside the inside function, which is the g function? I put in the letter x, or the variable x. Now I'm going to simplify. I'm going to distribute the 2, so I'll have 6x plus 2 minus 1. And then I'm going to put the 2 and the 1 together, I'll get 6x plus 1. So my new function is 6x plus 1. Okay, number 3, find g follows f x minus 1. And it would have been nice if they would have asked us for f follows g again, because we already had found f follows g, but this time they're saying g follows f. So g follows f is, um, is g on the outside and f on the inside, right? And so we're going to write it that way. We're going to take the f function, which is 2 parentheses minus 1, and we're going to put it inside the g function, which is 3 parentheses plus 1. Okay, and then uh, what are we going to put inside? Well, the input this time is x minus 1. So we put x minus 1 there. And now we're going to start to simplify. We're going to multiply the 2. We're going to distribute it for these two elements. So we're going to have 3 times 2x minus 2 minus 1 plus 1. So this is equal to, we're going to put negative 2 and negative 1 together. We get negative 3. So we have 3 times 2x minus 3 plus 1. Then we're going to distribute the 3. We're going to get 6x minus 9 plus 1. And finally, we'll have 6x minus 8. Okay? All right. Give the domain of h of x and the domain of its inverse. Okay, what's the domain of square root of x? Well, what are the numbers you can put inside square root of x? You can put inside any positive number or 0. So the domain of h of x is going to be x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, the domain of its inverse, you don't have to figure out the inverse to figure out the domain of the inverse. And the reason why is because if you have a function and it's got a certain domain and it's got a certain range, the domain corresponds to all the possible x values. The range corresponds to all the possible y values. Now, if you take the inverse of that function, basically what you're doing is reversing the x's and the y's, right? 
So that means that the domain and the range of the inverse function are going to be the exact opposite. For example, we already figured out that the domain of h of x is x is greater than or equal to 0, right? So we can actually uh, take that um, interval, and we can consider that to be the range. All we need to do is change the x to the y. But uh, basically, if the domain of the original function of x is greater than or equal to 0, the range of the inverse function is going to be y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, what about this function? What is the range of this function? What kind of numbers come out of the square root of x? Only positive numbers, right? Maybe 0 also. So basically, the range of the square root function is y is greater than or equal to 0. So that means that the domain of the inverse function is also going to be greater than or equal to 0. You just need to put x instead of y. All right? Moving on. Um, here we have a um, summation of an arithmetic sequence. It says to write out the first three terms of the series, um, the first term is going to be n equals 0, the second term is going to be n equals 1, and the third term is going to be n equals 2. So the first one is going to be 4 times 0 minus 2. We're just using the inside part of the summation, and that gives us negative 2. So the first term of the series is negative 2. Then we do n equals 1. It's going to be 4 times 1, which is 4, minus 2, which is 2. Okay? Then we do n equals 2. It's going to be 4 times 2, which is 8, minus 2, which is 6. 6. So the first three terms of the series are negative 2 plus 2 plus 6. Those are the first three terms of the series. Then it says to actually find the sum. Okay? So to find this sum, it looks like you would definitely need a calculator, but actually the numbers here work out pretty nicely. Um, we just need to use the formula for arithmetic sums, and that means we can use this. We can use either this one or this one. This one is more handy to use if we know the last uh, term of the, se the series, and in this case, I don't think we do. So let's use this one here. So the n value is going to be um, the last term, okay, or the number of terms we have total. Uh, how many terms do we have? Well, this is kind of tricky because it starts with n equals 0 and ends with 101. So that means that we basically have the numbers from 1 to 101 plus we have n equals 0. So we actually we have 102 terms. So our, our n is equal to 102. What's our d value? Our d is the uh, interval between each of these numbers. So it's going to be plus 4, plus 4, etc. So our d value is 4. U1 is the first term, so that's equal to negative 2. And uh, finally, um, and I think that's it, right? So let's sum it up. So we're going to do the sum of 102 terms, uh, and it's going to be um, 102, which is n, divided by 2, times 2u1, which is negative 2, plus n minus 1, which is 101, uh, times d, which is negative 2. Uh, I'm sorry, 4. Okay. Now we're going to do this, um, all this arithmetic. So 102 divided by 2 is 101. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 101 times uh, 404 is 404, and these are going to combine together to give you 400, and it's multiplied times, oh, I'm sorry, 102 divided by 2 is not 101, it's equal to 51. So we got 51 times 400, and we could do that without the calculator. So that's equal to 2, 4, um, 0, 0. Yeah, 2,400. Okay? I just noticed I did the multiplication wrong. 400 times 5 uh, gives me 2,000, but I need to move it over 
one digit to the left. So actually when I add it up, it gives me 20,400, not 2,400. Okay? Moving on. Convert point zero four repeating to a fraction in lowest terms. So this goes on forever. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. One of the ways we can do it is with the geometric sum formula. Okay? Basically, we can express this uh, repeating decimal uh, as a geometric sequence. We could say it's equal to 0 0.04 plus 0 0.04 times 0 0.01. I'm sorry, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.04 times 0.1 squared plus 0 0.04 times 0.1 cubed, okay? So basically, if we did it like this, we're building up 0 0.04, this one's going to be 0 0.004, this one's going to be 0 0.0004, right? So if we add all these together, we're going to get 0 0.0444 with 4 repeating, right? Okay, so basically we know that uh, our first term is equal to 0 0.04, and uh, our R value, our multiplier, is 0 0.1. And that's all we need to do to find in, uh, the sum of an e infinite sequence. The sum of an infinite sequence is 1 over 1 minus R, okay? So... I'm sorry, a, uh, u1 over 1 minus r. So the u1 is 0 0.04, the r is 1 minus 0.1, or the, point, the r is 0 0.1, so it's 1 minus 0 0.1, so it's 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.9, and uh, so we're going to multiply both sides by 100, both the top and the bottom by 100, and we get um, 4 divided by 90. That's it.